What are your thoughts about Louis Simmons' conjugate system? And what are your thoughts about training different variations of the compound exercises, like box squat, pose squats, etc.? These kind of exercises have their place in a program, or are they a waste of time? Well, uh, if you have read our blue book, you'll notice that some of the what he calls uh, variations on the compound exercises are included in the book, like pause squats, box squats. Louis didn't invent these things. You know, Louis never said he invented them. He just uses them extensively in his program. But the thing about Louis's programs, you have to remember, is that starting strength and West Side are two different programs for two completely different purposes. Okay? West Side training is for competitive power lifters who compete in federations that allow suits and wraps who don't measure squat depth and who do not test for drugs. That's what West Side is for. Now, I don't know that that's even controversial, is it? And it's not the West Side people that ask us this question because they all know better than that. All right, it's people who don't have an appreciation for the difference between power lifting and strength training. They're two completely separate things. We do strength training. Those guys do competitive power lifting. They're two different activities. Now, they both happen to include squats, bench presses, and deadlifts, but they also both happen to include five-pound plates and a barbell and a building, you know, and a floor to stand on. I mean, there are all kind of similarities between the between the equipment that we use, but we have a completely different approach from what West Side does, and we because we have a completely different purpose for doing it than West Side does. Now you've got to under you can't be so stupid as to conflate me teaching your grandmother how to deadlift enough to make her able to get up, you know, off of the pot by herself and restore some function to her as an 80-year-old woman, as opposed to me trying to teach Chuck Vogelpohl how to squat more than eight or 9,000 pounds. I don't care about that. I don't care about competitive power lifters. There aren't but about a 1,000 of them in the whole damn world anyway. Competitive power lifters, I think those of you that own gyms already know this, competitive power lifters don't pay the bills. They don't get the bills paid, boys and girls. Competitive power lifters, we tolerate them. You know, if they're, if they're not just raging assholes, we tolerate them, but we don't want them in the gym, you know, because they don't make you any money. You know, you uh, some 25-year-old kid that's a competitive lifter living in his parents' basement who barely pay you his monthly dues, what do you want to do business with him for? You know, I mean, you know, it's a sport I competed in, and it's, you know, sports lots of us compete. A lot of us still compete in that sport. But we don't fool ourselves into thinking that our primary market – as strength and conditioning professionals, is competitive power lifters. We don't care about competitive power lifters. You, you, they're, it's not practical to be concerned with these people. They'll bend your bars and tear up your floor. They won't pick up after themselves. They yell and scream. They intimidate your paying customers. They act like assholes about two-thirds of the time. Now, that's not to say they all act like that, but a lot of them do. And the ones that don't act like that know exactly what I'm talking about. All right? They're, the competitive power lifters are a giant pain in the ass. All right? On the other hand, competitive Olympic weightlifters are uh, quasi-intellectual 
prima donnas <laughs> is what they are. You know, I've dealt with those people too for decades, and they're a pain in the ass in a completely different way. Oh, one of the one of the more interesting things that those of us who have been around barbell sports for a long time have all noticed is the difference in the atmosphere in the warm up room at a power meet and an Olympic meet. It's a it's an astonishing difference. And I first noticed this uh, when, oh, back about 1980, when I took my buddy Jimmy Mosier to the Junior Nationals up in uh, Colorado Springs when I was in Colorado in 1980. I'd, he'd asked me to handle him and at, at this meet. And this is the first time I'd been to an Olympic meet of any sort, and it was the Junior's. And uh, the the most amazing thing that struck me within five minutes of being in the warm up room is the attitude of the people, the coaches and the lifters, in the warm up room at the meet. And I'd been to two or three powerlifting meets by then, and everybody at a powerlifting meet. And this is pretty much still the same way. Everybody in the powerlifting warm-up room is friendly. Everybody's, you know, not treating each other with disrespect and trying to, you know, have a dick measuring contest in the warm-up room. I mean, we measure your dick on the platform, not in the warm-up room at a power meet, right? But the in the warm-up room at the Olympic weightlifting meet, everyone is an intellectual colossus. Everyone is, you know, of towering intellect, and no one would dare offer to help another lifter load a bar or do anything else or offer advice or anything like that. Everyone just keeps to themselves and there's no interaction because it would be beneath elite athletes of the type found in Olympic weightlifting meet warm up rooms. You know, and, and those you know, there are enough of you listening to this right now that that don't have to take my word for it. You've been there and you've seen it happen. And you know exactly that I'm, you know that I'm right about that. And there's just some weird ass thing that goes on in the warm up room at an Olympic meet that doesn't happen in a powerlifting meet. And I, this is 41 years ago is when I first noticed that. Now I've been to, I've been to Olympic meets where the, where the group all knew each other and it wasn't quite so bad as it as it as it was at that particular meet, but at national meets that's the way it is. You know, there's just a different kind of an attitude uh, in the two different competitive venues. And it's uh it's uh it's interesting how that comes about. But anyway, back to back to Louis Simmons conjugate system which we call West Side. West Side is a different thing than starting strength. It's not the same thing. It's like playing po it's like comparing poker to blackjack. Yeah, there's money involved, but they're two completely different games. And there are cards involved, but they're two completely different games. And if you think that I I, I don't know anything about West Side, I've know enough to recognize it when I see it, but I don't know the ins and outs of the West Side conjugate method because I don't care about it. It's not what I do. I don't know a lot about tennis either. 